Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Stack. I'm Lisa Jung, and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So we're already on part three of the Beginner's Crash Course. So this is a series of workshops where we delve into each product of the Elastic Stack. So by the end of it, you could identify which products of the Elastic Stack would best serve your use case and know how to get started with these products. Now, in part one, we looked under the hood of Elasticsearch and Kibana and learned how to perform CRUD operations with these products. Now, in part two, we covered the relevance of your search and how you can fine tune it using Elasticsearch and Kibana. Now, today's workshop, part three, builds on the content of part two, and we'll be learning about how to run more advanced full text queries and how to build more complex queries with Elasticsearch and Kibana. Now, if you missed the first two workshops, not a big deal. So for each workshop, I create a GitHub repo. And these repos contain all the resources shared during the workshop, including the presentation slides and the recording of the workshop. Now, on your screen, you have a link to a GitHub repo. And this repo contains all the repos that have been created for the Beginner's Crash Course thus far. So if some of these stuff seem seem unfamiliar to you, then refer to this repo and get caught up afterwards. Now, Phoebe will post the link in the chat as we speak. Now, before we get started, let's do a quick recap of workshop part two. So if you are a developer working with data, the Elastic Stack is a great tool to have on your belt. Now, the stack consists of four products, Beats, Logstash, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. And with the stack, you can take data from any source in any format, then search, analyze, and visualize in real time. So today we'll focus on Elasticsearch, which is the heart of the Elastic Stack. And this is a search and analytics engine that powers a lot of the apps that you use today. So for example, if you've ever searched for a restaurant on Yelp or search for a repo on GitHub, Elasticsearch is the engine that is powering that search. So we search for things on a daily basis, right? And one of the most frustrating things for me is when I'm trying to fix a bug and I can't find a relevant solution online. So the results are kind of in the vicinity of what I'm looking for, but it's not quite what I need to fix my bug. And that is what relevance is all about. So when our users search for something on our app, we want results that are directly related to what the user is searching for. Now, the terms that we'll use a lot when talking about relevance are precision and recall. And these factors determine which documents are sent to the user as relevant search results. And depending on which factor we prioritize, our search results are going to look a lot different. So for example, when you set up a search query to prioritize precision, Elasticsearch ensures that all the retrieved results are a perfect match to the query, even if it means returning less or no documents. Now, on the other hand, when we prioritize recall, Elasticsearch gives gives you a lot of search results, even if the documents are loosely related to query. So as you can see, precision and recall are at odds with each other, because if you want to improve precision, it might cause a decline in recall and vice versa. So by fine tuning precision and recall, we can customize what your users see in their search results, which ultimately affects their search experience. Now, another term I'll be mentioning a lot is score. So when you search for something, you type in a search request in the search box, and Elasticsearch will look at what you typed in and pull up relevant documents or hits. Now, as I mentioned before, what search results get sent to the user can be fine-tuned by precision or recall. Now, when you look at the search results a little bit more, you probably have noticed that more relevant results are shown towards the top, whereas less relevant results are shown towards the bottom. And this ordering of search results based on their relevance is called ranking. 
Now, when we rank anything from Olympic sports or any type of competition, the ranking is determined by score. And the same goes for the search results. And the score of each document is calculated by a scoring algorithm, which assigns a higher score to more relevant results and a lower score for less relevant results. Now, how these scores are determined was covered during workshop part two, so feel free to watch the recording if you need more explanation. Okay, so far we have talked about precision, recall, and scoring, and these factors can be tweaked to customize what your users see in their search results, which ultimately affects their search experience. So what type of search experience we want to create in our app? Well, we definitely want a search bar where a user can search for things. And we want to make sure our search results are precise, but also have enough recall to return as many results as we can. And we want a search experience that is smart. We want it to take misspellings into account and make auto suggestions. And it'd be really awesome if our users could filter by certain categories. And if your app is partly sponsored by specific companies, you may want the sponsor results to appear at the top of the page as a separate entity or at the top of search results, which involves tweaking the scores of the search results as well. Now, all of these can be customized by writing Elasticsearch queries in the back end of our app so that when it receives a search request from a client, it can send an appropriate query to Elasticsearch and retrieve the results that will be sent back to the client. Now, in the previous workshop, we got our feet wet on writing these basic queries. And one of the queries that we went over is the match query. Now, this is a standard query for performing a full text search. And here is a general syntax. So what this is saying is get search results from this index. I want you to query all documents that match the following criteria. Now grab all documents that include these search terms in this field that I specify here. Now, a time where a match query shines is when the order or the proximity of the search terms are not as important in finding relevant documents. So for example, let's say a user searches for Python programming language an Elasticsearch will look for these terms in the documents. Now, as long as all or one of these terms are found within the document, the match query will send these results back as relevant results. Now, it doesn't care about the order or the proximity in which these search terms are found. So an example of a match to this query would look something like this. So you can see that the search terms Python and programming and language are scattered across a document and are not found right next to each other or in this order. However, the match query still works in this case because if a document has all three of these search terms, it is highly likely that we're talking about Python, the programming language, and not Python, the snake. But in cases where the order or the proximity of the search terms are important, we're gonna get some funny results with a match query. So for example, when we're searching for lyrics or phrases, the order in which these search terms are found will be important. So let's say a user typed in blowing in the wind by Bob Dylan, and we currently have a match query set up in our backend. Well, the match query doesn't care about the order or the proximity in which these search terms are found. It's, it's not designed to search for phrases. So it might pull up documents with search terms that are scattered across the documents. So for example, this hit is talking about mind blowing ways to declutter your life. Then it mentions win somewhere and then the term in and the and Bob, whose brother's name is Dylan. So this head does contain all the search terms, but it's completely irrelevant because the order or the proximity of the search terms were not taken into account. Now there's a query that is specifically designed to search for phrases, and this is called the match phrase query. So the match phrase query looks almost identical to the match query, except 
that the match parameter is now replaced by match phrase. So this query says, get search results from this index. Now I want you to query all documents that match the following phrase. This is a phrase you're looking for, and this is the field where the phrase should be found. Now, this is the start of the new material we'll cover for workshop part three. And the best way to show you how these queries work is to demo them using Elasticsearch and Kibana. Now, in order to do that, we need to complete a few steps, and we actually cover these steps during workshop part two, so I'm going to breeze over it. Now, I don't expect you to follow along with the setup right now. I'm just showing you what you need to do so you could refer back to the recording if you want to try this out yourself. So first, we need to download Elasticsearch and Kibana or access these two products hosted on the Elastic Cloud. Then we need to add data to Elasticsearch so we have something to search for. Now, earlier, we shared a link to the table of content for Beginner's Crash Course series. Now I'm showing it again on my screen here. So all you have to do is to go to this repo and click on part two. And when you get there, scroll down to resources section and you'll see the video of the workshop. Now to set up Elasticsearch in Kibana and add data to Elasticsearch, watch the video from timestamp 15 to 2146. And this video will give you step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do. So note that for today's workshop, we'll be using the same data set from workshop part two. And this is a data set of news headlines from HuffPost from the year 2012 through 2018. And the link to the data set is included in the workshop part two of the GitHub repo. But if you follow the video, you'll be able to get, get to this point without a problem. Okay, so for everything we'll cover after this point, you'll refer to GitHub repo for part three. And this is also found in the table of contents link we shared with you earlier. So click on part three and have this pulled up to follow along. Okay, so here's a game plan for today's workshop. So first, we'll delve deeper into advanced queries for searching text fields. Then we'll learn how to build combination of queries to answer more complex questions. And along the way, we'll also learn how to fine tune the relevance of our search results. Now to walk you through these topics, I have Elasticsearch and Kibana up and running. I've also added the news category data set to Elasticsearch. And this data set is being managed by an index named news headlines. Okay, so I'm gonna get organized here real quick. Right. So I have two windows open side by side. So on the left, I have the Kibana console. And on the right, I have the part three repo open. Now Kibana console is split into two panels. The left panel is where you send queries to Elasticsearch. And the right panel shows you the response from Elasticsearch. Now for the rest of the workshop, we'll be sending search requests from Kibana to Elasticsearch and explore more advanced and complex queries. Now, if you look to your right, you'll see the part three repo, and this contains all the resources that are shared during the workshop. And this is where you find the queries that I'll be sharing with you. So let's scroll over to review from workshop part two. Now, there are two main ways to search in Elasticsearch. These are queries and aggregations. Now, queries are used to retrieve documents that match the specified criteria. And aggregations analyze the data and present the summary of data. Now, before we get into advanced search queries, we need to know how our data set is structured so we know what information to look for and where to look for it. And there's a query you can use for that. So go to your repo and scroll down to get information about documents in an index. Now for every query that we'll go over, I included the syntax for you so you could customize this for your own use case. But for our tutorial, we'll use a query shown below example. Now this query says, get search results from the index news headlines. So I'm gonna copy and paste that into our console. 
make sure to click on it to select it and click on this green arrow to send the request. Now, if you look at lines, oops, 10 through 13, it'll tell you that we have more than 10,000 documents in our data set. Now line 16 hits will show you the top 10 hits by default. Now let's scroll down to a document to take a look. So this document is from index news headlines and on the source field, it'll list all the fields or the content a document contains. So for example, this is a date where the article was published in, short description, category, headline, and et cetera. Okay, so when you scroll down to other documents, you'll see that these articles are written under different categories, such as education and entertainment. And before we can write a query, it'd be really helpful to know what type of categories exist in our data set so we know what type of questions we could ask. So remember, there are two main ways to search in Elasticsearch, and these are queries and aggregations. We just sent a search query to retrieve all documents in an index, but now we're interested in what types of categories exist in our data set. Now, in this case, we don't want to retrieve documents. We want to analyze our data set to get the summary of categories that exist in our data. So this time, we're going to send an aggregations request. So scroll down to aggregations requests, then down to example. So this request is saying get search results from news headlines index. By the way, this is an aggregations request. Now I want you to name the analysis report by category and run an analysis on the term category in the field and fetch up to 100 categories if you got it. So let's copy and paste that to the Kibana console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll go to line 10 and click on this downward arrow to minimize hits. Then you'll access the aggregations report, which we named by category. And if you look under buckets, you'll see an array of all the categories that exist in our data set. So it seems like we have articles about politics, entertainment, style and beauty, and et cetera. So it seems like we can ask a lot of questions about diverse topics. Now, in the beginning of the workshop, we talked about the match query and the match phrase query. So let's test these out. So scroll down to full text queries. Now, when we're searching for things in a text field, like a description field, for example, we have multiple queries to choose from. Now, the match query is a standard query for performing a full text search, and this query retrieves documents that contain the search terms. Now, the order and the proximity in which search terms are found are not considered as a priority. So earlier, we talked about how the match query worked for search terms like Python programming language, but this is not the best query to use when you're searching for phrases. So what happens when you use the match query to search for phrases? Let's find out. Well, we know that our data set has an entertainment category, so it's likely to have articles about popular songs. So we're going to search for a song title, which is a form of a phrase, and we're going to use a match query to see how it holds up. So let's scroll down to what happens when you use a match query to search for phrases. Now, we're gonna use a match query to search for Ed Sheeran's song, Shape of You. And this query says, get search results from news headlines. I want you to query all documents that match the following criteria. Find me all documents that contain the search terms in the headline. So let's copy and paste that into our console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll see that we got more than 10,000 hits. So let's take a look at the top hit. 
Now the headline reads, "Fitness tests: Are you in shape?" So we got two out of three search terms, "you" and "shape," but these search terms are not found in order. And as a result, our top hit is completely irrelevant to the song "Shape of You." So the next hit is pretty relevant. We see Ed Sheeran's "Shape of You" gets an unexpected Latin remix. All right, so that's pretty relevant. What about the third one? The headline reads: "The shape of your face may affect how much money you make." Now, this hit is completely irrelevant, but I am curious about what kind of face shape that I have. So I'm totally gonna read this later. But if you scroll this down, scroll down even further, you'll see that there are a lot of articles about the shape of your face or about getting in shape for the summer. Now we can do a lot better than this. So I want you guys to help me. Which query should I use to search for a phrase? So type the answer in the chat window. Anyone? All right. Yep, you're correct. We're gonna use the match phrase query. So let's scroll down to searching for phrases. Using the match phrase query, then down to example. Now this is almost identical to the match query, except that the match parameter has been replaced by match phrase parameter. Now, when the match phrase parameter is used, all hits must match the following criteria: the search terms "shape of" and "you" must appear in the headline. And the terms must appear in that order, and the terms must appear next to each other. So let's copy and paste this into the console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll see that we got three hits, and the recall the recall is a lot lower compared to the ten thousand hits that we had before. So let's take a look at the top hit. Scroll down to the head headline field, which reads, "As Sharon's Shape of You" gets an unexpected Latin remix. So this is a very precise match. Now let's move on to the next headline. It talks about how Ed Sharon joins Jimmy Fallon to play "Shape of You" on classroom instruments. Another great match. Now the last one talks about how the Vamps and Conor Maynard absolutely slayed the "Shape of You" sing-off. So all three of these hits contain the phrase "Shape of You" in the headline, and we really improved our precision, but it reduced our recall quite significantly. So as you could see, just by using the match or match phrase query, you can alter the precision or recall of your search. All right, so we got to see the match and match phrase query in action. So let's go over other advanced search queries. So let's scroll down Oops. to running a match query against multiple fields. So the common dilemma when designing a search experience is that we don't always know the context in which the user is searching. So we need to write a query that could handle a variety of contexts. For example. Let's say a user types in Michelle Obama in the search bar. Is a user looking for a direct statement written by Michelle Obama, or articles that have been written about her? Well, we have no idea, right? So, in response to that, we can write a query that accommodates both of these contexts and send back more well-rounded search results. So, in the case where the user is looking for statements written by Michelle Obama. We'll search for her name in the author field. Now, in case where a user is looking for articles written about her, we'll search for her name in the headline and the short description fields. So, to do this, you could use the multi-match query. So, turn to your repo and scroll down to example. So, this query says, "Get search results from news headlines." Query all documents that match the following criteria. Heads up, 
you're going to search through multiple fields. And I want you to look up Michelle Obama in the following fields, headline, short description, and authors. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll see that we got 5128 hits and all of these mention Michelle Obama in one or more fields that we specified. So let's take a look at the top hit. Now, if you look at the short description, Michelle Obama may have sold a show, but the headline is actually about Bernie Sanders. So let's look at the second document. The short description mentions Clara Barton and Michelle Obama and others, but the headline is actually about 50 women who shaped America's health. So as you can see, the top hits are not primarily about Michelle Obama. But my guess is that our users want articles that primarily focus on her. So how can we make sure that these users, the users get these types of articles? Well, if Michelle Obama is mentioned in the headline instead of the short description, it's highly likely that the article would be primarily about her. So what if we let an article's headline carry more weight than the short description? And you can do that by using per field boosting. So let's scroll down to that section. Then down to example. Now this query is almost identical to the multi-match query that we just went over. The only thing that is different is this caret symbol right by the field headline. And what this is saying is to boost the score of the document that has Michelle Obama in the headline field. So the matching articles would show up higher in the search results. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll see that it yields the same number of hits as the last query, but the ranking of the hits have changed. So if you look at the top hits headline, talks about how Michelle Obama appears on Jeopardy. Let's look at another one. This one talks about her marriage to Barack Obama. And the third one talks about a vegetable that Michelle Obama truly hates. Now, uh, that vegetable is beets, by the way. I like hot to know. But um, anyways, you can see the articles that mention Michelle Obama in the headlines are now being shown at the top of the list. So let's scroll down to what happens when you use a multi-match query to search for a phrase. So let's say while searching for Michelle Obama, our user suddenly remembers that she's throwing a party for her friends and she wants some ideas for it. So she goes to the search bar and types in party planning and we have our app set up so that it'll run an identical query that we just ran. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select it and send. Now, you'll see that this query yields a lot of hits, uh, 2846 to be exact. Now, this happens because a multi-match query performs a match query in multiple fields. Now, remember, the match query performs on or logic by default. That means that if any one of these search terms appear in any of these fields, the document will be considered as a hit and get sent back to the user. So let's take a closer look at the results. Now the headline of the top hit reads New Year's Eve party planning ideas. Okay, so that's pretty relevant. The next one talks about the birthday party planning for recovering perfectionists. Okay, yep, that's pretty relevant. But I wanna show you something interesting. 
So if you look at line 90, the headline reads, Bernie Sanders and Tom Perez playing national tour to boost candidates, grassroots party activism. Now, I'm pretty sure this is not the type of party planning our user is looking for. Now, this hit does contain the terms planning and party, but these are scattered across the documents and are not found right next to each other. And because of that, it yielded completely irrelevant results. So how can we improve the precision of multi-match query? Well, you can add the phrase type match. So scroll down to that section, then down to example. Now this query will look almost identical to the multi-match query, except that we added the type parameter and set it equal to phrase. Now, what this does is it runs a match phrase query against each field. So it only pulls up documents that contain the exact phrase. So let's copy and paste that into our console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll notice that we have six hits this time. So we, we reduced our recall quite a bit compared to over 2,800 hits that we had. Now you'll see that all six of these hits have the phrase party planning in either short description or in the headline. And the ones that contain the phrase in the headline are shown higher on the list. So we have increased our precision as well. Okay, so let's move on to the combined queries. So when we're searching for an answer, a lot of the time we're asking a multifaceted question. So for example, what if we want political articles about Michelle Obama published before the year 2016? Now to answer this question, we need to write three different queries. One, querying documents about Michelle Obama. Two, querying Michelle Obama articles from political politics category. And three, querying articles written before the year 2016. So how do we combine all of these queries to answer our question? Well, one of the ways to do that is by running a bool query. And with this query, not only can you combine multiple queries into one request, you could further specify Boolean clauses to narrow down your search results. Now, this query might seem complicated at first, but I'm gonna break this down and break it down even more. So let's scroll down to the syntax of bool query. Now a bool query starts with query, then bool. And this query offers four clauses that you could choose from. And these are must, must not, should, and filter. So to help you understand this, I'm gonna explain these clauses in the context of resume screening. So we all have applied for jobs before and each company has specific criteria they're looking for in a candidate and they need an efficient way to narrow down the candidates. And a bull query can be used to do just that. So one way is to specify the criteria a candidate must meet to be considered for the role. And these criteria or queries will be placed under the must clause. Now, it'll also be helpful to specify what they do not want in a candidate. And these criteria or queries are uh, put under must not clause. Now, another thing we could add is to have a nice to have criteria. And not having these qualities do not exclude a candidate from the process but the ones that do match these criteria will be on the short list for the interview. And these criteria or queries are placed under the should clause. Now, lastly, the company may wanna filter more candidates based on whether they fit into a yes or no category. So for example, the company may not wanna relocate someone, so they only want candidates who are currently in the desired city. Now, a candidate is either in or not in the city they're hiring in. So candidates can be filtered into either yes or no category. And this is what the queries 
under the filter closet are used for. And only the ones that are filtered into the yes category are returned as hits. Now, to recap, we just covered four clauses you could use with the bool queries. And all of these queries are optional. Now, you can mix and match these clauses to accommodate your goal. It also doesn't matter in which order they appear either. So let's go over how you could put these clauses into use. And we're going to go back to Michelle Obama as an example. So Michelle Obama, Spear has a lot of initiatives. And she's known as a role model, of everything from empowerment to parenting to fashion even. And there are so many multifaceted questions that we could ask about her. But first, we need to understand what types of Michelle Obama articles are in our data set, because that will help us decide what types of questions that we could ask. And one way to understand that is by searching for categories of articles that mention Michelle Obama. And to do this, we'll have to send a combination of query and aggregations requests. So let's scroll down to that section, then down to example. Now, this request is almost identical to the one we sent earlier for categories in our data set. So I'm not going to go over this line by line, but essentially we're asking for a summary of categories that Michelle Obama is mentioned in. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select it and send. Now minimize hits and you'll get aggregations report named category mentions. And under buckets, you'll see all the categories that mention Michelle Obama. And these widely range from politics, black voices, wellness, to even weddings. So let's scroll down to the must clause, then down to example. Now, Michelle Obama is a political figure. So maybe we will find something interesting if we look up political articles that feature Michelle Obama. Now, this consists of two queries, one that queries all articles that mention Michelle Obama in the headline field, and the other queries Michelle Obama articles under the politics category. Now, in order for us to get relevant results, both of these queries must be true. So in this case, we'll use the must clause. So this is a bool query where all hits must match the phrase Michelle Obama in the headline field. And all hits must also match the term politics in category field. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. Now you'll see that we got 45 hits. And if you look at the hits, you'll see that all hits have Michelle Obama in the headline and they're categorized under politics. So to give you an example, this headline reads, Democrats and Republicans agree, Michelle Obama absolutely nailed it. And this category is under politics. So when we ran this bull query with the must clause, we only got 45 hits. Well, maybe we're missing out on a lot of interesting articles because we're only focusing on politics. Now, we do want to know what non-political things she has been up to, but let's say we're not really interested in her wedding. So how do we grab all Michelle Obama articles except for the ones about her wedding? Now, this is a scenario where both must and must not clauses come in handy. So let's scroll down to the must not clause, then down to example. Now we just learned how to use the must clause, and now we're going to add a must not clause to it. So here we're sending a bool query where all hits must match the phrase Michelle Obama in the headline. Now all hits must not match the term weddings in the category field. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Let's select it and send. Now you'll see that our recall is much better. We now have 203 hits versus 45 that we got with the must clause. And if you look at all the documents, it'll have Michelle Obama in the headline, and it'll show you all articles from all categories 
except for wedding. So here we see politics, taste, and again, politics, but no weddings. Now, this mix of must and must not clauses allowed us to look at a greater number of articles, yet it still gave us the flexibility to exclude certain categories. So let's move on to the should clause. And down to example. Now, think of the should clause as a nice to have criteria. And the documents do not need to meet these criteria to be considered as hits. However, the ones that do will be given a higher score, so it shows up higher in the search results. So let's talk about a scenario where we might use it. So February is Black History Month. And let's say a user searches for Michelle Obama in February. And it's possible that the user is searching in the context of Black History Month more than in the context of weddings, taste, or style. And to accommodate this context, we could include the category Black Voices under the should clause. So the query that we're gonna send is pretty similar to the last one. Again, we have a bool query where all hits must match the phrase Michelle Obama in the headline. Now, just a heads up, the hits do not have to match the queries under the should clause. However, if a hit matches the phrase black voices in the category, then give it a higher score so it ends up higher in the search results. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select it and send. And when you send this request, you'll see that we still get the same number of hits, 207, as the last query. And this makes sense because the should clause does not add or exclude more hits. However, it does change the ranking of the documents. So if you take a look at all of these documents, you'll see that top hits are now from category Black Voices. Let's look at the next one. Yep. And the next one. Okay. So let's move on to the last clause, which is the filter clause. So scroll down to that section. Now, the filter clause contains filter queries that place documents in either a yes or no category. So for example, let's say you're looking for an article written in a certain time range. So you set a time range filter, which determines which documents fall within this range and which ones don't. And only the ones that fall into the yes category will be included in the hits. So let's put that to the test and scroll down to example. Now, let's say we want all Michelle Obama articles that have been published between certain dates. And this is a bull query that you're going to send where all hits must match the phrase Michelle Obama in the headline and apply a filter so that we retrieve documents that fall within this date range. And these are the two dates. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select it and send. Now you'll see that we got 33 hits. And if you look at the date field of all of these hits, these will be published between the two dates that we specified here. All right. So those are all the um, queries that I got, got for you. So to recap, we went over a lot of queries and how each query can impact the precision, recall, and scoring of the hits. And what we learned is just the tip of an iceberg, and there are countless combinations of queries and parameters that will help you fine tune the search experience. And the point of this workshop was to give you enough foundation to explore more advanced queries on your own. So I know we're coming at the top of the hour, so I'm going to move on to um, the announcements. So what's next? Um, so throughout the series, like we really zoomed in on queries used for customizing the search experience. Now, before we delve into more advanced practices, I wanted to zoom out and focus on the bigger picture. So what does it actually look like after you add a search functionality to your app using elastic products or solutions?
And one of the ways we can show you is through Elastic App Search solution. So Elastic App Search allows you to quickly add search functionality to your app just out of the box. Now, I've invited a fellow developer advocate, Jay Miller, and he's going to show us how to build an app that searches for tech groups focused on diversity. And he'll do that by showing you how to integrate an Elasticsearch app solution to a React app. And this should be a lot of fun. And it's happening on Wednesday, March 31st at 12 p.m. Central Time. So Phoebe is going to drop the event link in the chat as we speak. Now, the part four of the Beginner's Crash Course will resume on the following month on April 28th. Now, we'll do a deep dive on aggregations and learn how to aggregate data with Elasticsearch and Kibana. Now, the event details will be posted on our Elastic America virtual chapter. So join this chapter to get informed on my future workshops. All right. So lastly, if you have any questions about Elastic, the discussion forum is a great place to get your questions answered. And we have a community of developers and developer advocates that answer these questions on the platform. So feel free to post your questions here. And that is a wrap. So thank you so much for coming and I'll see you later.